Okay, viewers, you are welcome to Moringa Rabbit Farm. I'm Francis. I'm a rabbit lover. I'm a rabbit farmer. In fact, I care for rabbits. I feel rabbits. I talk rabbits every blessed day. Um, today, I want us to talk about how to start the farm. So the question is, why don't you start small? and then grow with experience it's very good that way you know we all have big dreams of course uh, because one man said we dream anyway so why don't you dream big it's good to dream big but remember every every thousand miles begins with just a step so it's good you have your big dreams probably you want to have a setup with 100 rabbits 500 rabbits thousand rabbits but you may not be able to do that just a single day so it's good you start small and then you grow big you can grow up to uh, your dream uh, the reason why i'm saying that rabbit farming comes with um, a lot of skills that must uh, be used uh, ranging from how to handle the rabbits how to feed them how to construct the cages and a whole lot medication all this has to do with um, experience so it's good to start small and as you are growing, you are gaining all this experience. So let's go it by that way. But hey, when you are new here, don't forget to subscribe because we will help you to learn most of the basic things that you need and to apply for your farm to be successful. So stay with us as we learn together. So, like I was saying, one is the handling of the rabbits the handling of the rabbits you need to be very experienced like um the bunnies these ones like this are just uh, two months old so all the time when you come you need to inspect them make sure they are all healthy when you pick the rabbit you look at it you look at the ears look at the nose and the mouth side all that is part of the learning you look at it so any time you are seeing indications here you are seeing something like uh, scratches or it's trying to or wounds it means that there is a problem and you need to work on that and then so that is one the handling of the rabbits themselves you need to work on that so that is an experience you need to get before you can expand your farm then number two number two how should you put your cages how your cages are supposed to look like if you are using the indoor system your cages will be different this one is on the outside this is the out door system that I'm using. You should know how to construct the cages. When you look at this one, it closes this way. Yeah. <laughs> this is how I close it. So, um, as we all know, this is September. The rain, we are in the heavy raining uh, season and it's been raining. But as you can see, everything is intact all my rabbits even the bunnies they are alive but if you are using the indoor that one you can use only the net but with the outdoor use this type of cages so that um they will be protected from water storm and then the direct sunlight is no good for rabbits so when you start small you'll be able to know which type of cage 
will do for you. And the moment you do that, you have about two to three um, kindling in the processing. Then you can now expand your farm. So that's number two. One other thing you need to uh, consider. Reason number three why you need to start small is to enable you to know which breed is very good for you as a beginner um just like i'm having this is uh american chinchilla this is the chinchilla it's one of the good breeds that you need to start your farm with as a beginner so because the meat to bone ratio is very good and it also has a higher uh, nutrient ratio. I mean, it gives the number of uh, bunnies or babies it normally lives inside. So that's one. We are talking of the breeds. And you can also look at this one. This is the California white. California white and with the California white they grew faster I can tell you that with the bunnies three to four months you can start slaughtering three to four months you can get two kg and depending on the feeding and that's good but there are other rabbits no matter how you feed them they never grow they never gain weight but with this one, the moment you put the right feeding into place, they gain weight and grow faster. And the littering ratio is also higher. So, American chinchilla, the California white, they are good breeds that you can start with. One more thing. One more thing. This is the the New Zealand white, the pure New Zealand white. It's also another good breed. In fact, I would say this is the best breed one should start with. If your aim is to produce for meat, especially for meat, start with the New Zealand white. It's a good breed. This one like this is a mother. It has kindled about, and there are seven seven inside they are all doing well you just get, and this is the first time this is it first time you just look at seven they are all doing well you see so they are the good breeds you should um, start your farm with so viewers this is um some of the best guidelines that i think we need to learn before we can start our farm so as for us to succeed thank you for watching